Hi Tarot Tribe, it's Ethany and I am here to share with you another four Awakened Soul Oracle cards that have been finished and have joined the tribe um, for nearly the end of our Kickstarter campaign and man, I am going to be honest with you guys, I have not enjoyed this process. <laughs> <laughs> I have been racked with anxiety. Um, I am probably never going to do a, I don't know if I said this before in my other video, but I'm probably never going to do a, a, a crowdfunder again. It just, it has not, and it's not about like trusting the process and it's not about like, you know, knowing things that, because you never know the outcome, even though you can manifest until you're blue in the face or until the cows come home. It's more just that, um, yeah, it's the unknown thing that was, it's not, it hasn't done me very well. And um, it hasn't really, I don't think, benefited Danielle very much either, being her first time. And I don't think I took that into consideration, the fact that it is her first time in a bigger scale, putting her artwork out there. And for me, I've been kind of putting myself out there for a long time. So I know when something doesn't kind of like, oh, look, you know, we weren't, we weren't back in the first like week fully, whatever, you know, that's fine. These things, you have a time period for that to happen and people want to see more of your work and, and that kind of stuff. So that's cool. Um, but I guess for someone who is first putting their artwork out there and allowing it to be in the public eye and be judged in a way, um, is hard and I should have taken that more into consideration before I did this. It, it, I should have managed that as a priestess and as a mentor and as an employee, I sh employer, sorry, I should have um, managed that better for her. Uh, and the reason we did this was it's not, it wasn't like, you know, oh, status, like, oh, I have a Kickstarter campaign. Um, it is to get her pa finished being paid. Um, so that I'm not just doing it in increments to manage my cash flow because I have a family to take care of. Um, and, and, and it's also to obviously pay the printer and the taxes and everyone's shipping fees. So yeah, it's not, anyway, it's been an interesting experience, but I'm going to get to the cards now, but I wanted to publicly like, I guess, talk through the fact that I should have done that better by her, I feel. Um, but hey, we've got eight days to go. Um, I'm really hoping we all rally at the end to get this done. Uh, I believe, I really believe that we're, we will get, we will get there. We've put our heart and soul into this. Um, so, whew. anyway, let's get on to the, the new cards. So the first card, um, is our connection card. And this, I love and collaborated with a friend and a rela relation of mine um, on my stepmom side, Perth Yoga Girl, Stacey. So she has an Instagram account and I love her stuff and I was always going to do um, a card that connected to the spirit of yoga. One of my coven sisters back in Australia is a yogi and she has always been trying to get me to go to yoga. Sorry Mara. <laughs> Sorry Gaia, I never went. Um <laughs> but uh she she's amazing. So I was always going to do a, a something in alignment to yoga because I know how amazing it is and my sister, you know, did yoga for a, as a as a spiritual practice and not just a physical practice like the meditation and everything every day for years. But it's not something that I know much about. Um, tarot, sure. Uh, yoga, not so much. So I collaborated with Stacey on this one. And we were talking about how yoga, even though I have gone to yoga classes and things like that, um, is about connection. Connection to breath and to body and awareness and self-awareness and introspection and opening your heart up and like all those amazing, beautiful, spiritual things. So that's why this became the connection uh, the connection card and I know from personal experience when doing yoga that I totally know that the whole like being connected to your breath and really being forced to connect back to your self and be connected to your breath um, running for me when I can run or exercising or boxing or whatever that I'm more of a 
kind of want to do that kind of thing for exercise, but I also really value um, yoga as well. So that's our connection card. Our connection card is about opening, oh, this sun, um, I'm going to get a drop cloth, is about honouring your body, honouring yourself, honouring your breath, coming home, connecting to the elements, yourself, your inner self, and uh, allowing that flow. So that's our connection card. The next card I am a wee bit obsessed with uh, is our guidance card. And here we see a, an awakened soul who is consulting her cards, her tarot cards. And I really, I had an idea for this, this card. I sketched out an idea for this card and I sent it to Danielle. And it was, it, guys, it would have been <laughs> not good. <laughs> It was lame. <laughs> I, um, and then I had like an aha moment when I was like, I just can't. Oh my God, this sun. I'm so sorry, guys. You're probably going to be more annoyed with me complaining about it than you are about the actual sun. Um, and I had this aha moment of like, of course, like what do I do for guidance besides talk to my dad or talk to my mom or um, trusted friends? Um, I'm like, doy. <laughs> I consult the tarot. Hello. <laughs> so I, uh, and I talk to my guides. So this is how this card came about. And she is, she has there, and there's a very specific reason why there is the sun, the moon, and the star card. A good friend of mine actually it went through more than one incarnation. It went my tarot mentor, then my, another tarot mentor and priestess friend of mine, and then two friends of mine had this store called the sun, moon and star, um, which was the first place I really connected to, I guess, the community, um, the spiritual community in, in Perth. And I put the sun, moon and star cards in there as a little bit of a nod and a thank you to them for being some huge guidance in my life. Um, so that's kind of my little dedication to, to some people there. Um, yeah, so the, this card is about guidance in any way, shape or form. It's not just about the tarot or oracle cards um, or meditation or anything like that. It's about guidance even if that just comes from listening to your inner voice. It's guidance of going on walkabout or taking a pilgrimage or calling a girlfriend at three o'clock in the morning because you just, you know, you've had a shitty breakup or it's, it's looking for that hope and looking for that compass to, to help you point back north. However you do that. I've chosen to show you through the tarot, but it's it, it's in really in any way, shape or form you choose to, to see guidance. But this is just one incarnation of guidance for me. So that's the, the guidance card and she's just beautiful. And she's also going to be one of our coloring in pages, which I'm going to announce today as well on uh, social media. The next one is Solitude, and I love this card. I love this card for so many reasons. I love this card because just the idea of being able to go out into the mountains and camp under the stars, um, amazing. Um, and just to have that time alone in nature and time alone to kind of reset yourself would be phenomenal. And I love, I mean, obviously Danielle's done an amazing job with the artwork. I love the bobcat, which is considered by many cultures to be an animal in North America that is linked to solitude. Um, and I, I really just love the whole idea of spending some time alone. And this is a big spiritual lesson for a lot of people. Now I'm just trying to see, okay, so we've got the, ins the instructions for life from the Dalai Lama on our wall. And the number eight is spend, I'm just looking at it, spend some time alone every day. There are people who really struggle with spending time on their own um, for whatever reason. A lot of the time it's avoidance. A lot of the time it's because they don't like uh, the silence or they feel they have, to, they have to fill it with something. I used to be that way where I used to feel like I had to fill the silence and be funny and, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Um, they fear their own quiet. They fear their own thoughts, their own mind, their own... What's going to happen when there's no one here? <clears throat> so there's a difference between being lonely 
um, in regards to just like I'm wanting to hang out with people and like having that real fear of being on your own. You know, these are people who jump from relationship to relationship and that, that kind of stuff. So solitude is a really big spiritual lesson um, for all of us. And you don't have to, like, I don't feel that if you are a, in, you like being around people and that's just the way that you're born and the way that you are, that you should force yourself into like 60 days of solitude or something like that just to prove you can or to be spiritual. It's all about knowing yourself, right? So you need to honor who you are as well. This is more about solitude in standing on your own, in your power, on your own two feet and allowing yourself to be the one who guides the way, who says what goes for your life um, and not being afraid of being on your own. So it's a big thing. I can't wait to, I think I've actually written about that already in the guidebook, um, but it's a great card. It'd be interesting when it comes up for people. Um, and sometimes we just need all of our friends and family to shut up and stop giving us advice because we need some time to process things and time to to deal with them on our own and to come to our own conclusions and our own um, decisions. And our final new one, um, I don't know if we're going to get to another one before the Kickstarter ends. I hope so, but um, we'll see. Uh, is boundaries and this is a little bit of a nod to the very famous Waterhouse the magic circle um, painting I mean if you've most of us have seen this so um, but with a modern witch <clears throat> I wish I was that cool I mean look at her uh, <laughs> so she is casting her magic circle that's the symbol in this card that is for her this awakened soul as a ritual and energetic manifestation of boundaries, as a representation of our boundaries in life. So magic circles are great because magic circles are meant to contain the energy when you cast a circle. It's like circle casting 101 if you uh, don't know about magic circles. If you cast a circle correctly, the idea is that you contain the energy that you're going to be raising in your ritual in your spell in your work in this container and then release it out into the universe when you're ready when it's at its peak and you're sending that out for manifestation so it contains it within and then it also is meant to keep outside influences out um, so that nothing can influence your work um, the energy for yourself isn't broken um, and it has even been said and I don't really know about this but um because oh, we've cast circle in public places and we've had people see us but it's even been said that um you can throw a glamour that if people aren't really looking for you and you're not creating a lot of noise that people can I've created glamour so that people have looked over me um but not in a circle space we've had a couple of gate crashes over the years uh but it has been said that it can hide you as well so the magic circle is is representing in this boundaries Boundaries are bloody tough. Boundaries are tough for empaths, for healers, for magical people with big hearts. It's hard to say no to people because you instantly get put in their shoes and you feel their pain, you feel their needs. Oh, it's tough. Um, but it's also important for self-care. It's an act of self-love. It's a huge act of self-love to say no sometimes. And when you... Um, say no and when you contain that energy for yourself you're taking care of yourself you're looking after you which is super important because you need to have energy and time for yourself and time for your spirituality and time for your kids and time for your art all those lovely things time for your kitty cats you know time for your baking whatever your whatever you do you still need time time for you and we can't always be giving so boundaries are on many levels they can be emotional boundaries uh, physical boundaries um, mental boundaries, spiritual boundaries. So it's having a look at all those ways in which we allow people to interact with us and treat us and speak to us and act. So we can't control other people in regards to what they're going to necessarily do to us, but we can control what we accept in our lives um, in regards to if someone steps over the line, we can try to course correct or we can say, you know what, that's one too many times. 
So boundaries is a really um, important card and an important part of a spiritual practice as well. So that's our last one for this round. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed me kind of talking a little bit about the new cards for the deck. And thank you so much to everyone who has been sharing and pledging and being amazing support through all this. Um, like I said, it's probably going to be the last time I do this. Uh, <laughs> and if you can help us get there, um, every little bit helps. We've got prints now available so you can get your favourite card printed. Um, or any one that you want as a beautiful 8x10 print. And um, the Square Affirmation deck is up as well as a separate uh, separate pledge. So you can get both or you can just get that if that's if that's how you wanted to help us or you do a one card reading um, from the deck where you keep the cards. So I really do hope that uh, we'll see you over on Kickstarter if this is vibing with you. And thank you so much for watching.